Hey guys, today I want to talk about why it's important to have a whiteboard in the Philippines. Those dry erase boards, they're important. As we age, we forget things. And I'm one of those people that forget things. I have a lot on my plate every day. You know, helping you guys, there's a lot of things we have to do over here. I have to remember to do this for one guy and do that for another guy. Because I try to help you guys out a lot, you guys know that. But here's why it's important to all expats. Number one, it's a place to put your, your budget up there and to remind yourself to put savings in a certain account or something like that, or to do a, a, a money transfer on a certain date. You put it up there and it reminds you. I check it every day. And you can, the good thing about it is you can just dry erase it and change your budget as you go. So if you need help doing something, you just, you know, you need to help, you know, you, you look at your budget and say, oh, okay, I, I need to do this here. So I'll change money out of here to here. It helps you. The other thing is I put my phone number up there just in case because I'm always trying to find my phone number. I can't remember my phone number for nothing because I have two phone numbers. I remember one, but I don't remember my Filipino number. So I always have a problem with that. But anyway, the dry erase board is not just for that too. It's also for putting, putting up there people you want to call every week to remind you. When you're over here after a while, you tend to forget to call people. It's not something... It's just like when somebody's far away, they're off your mind. You, you kind of forget that. It's not a good thing, especially if you love that person. And, it's, you know, some people would say, well, if you really love that person, you wouldn't forget about them. Well, I do remember them. It's just that I don't remember them when it comes time to call them. That's the problem. But, like, I, I, do, I do try to call people in my family quite often when I get a chance. But that's one of the things I put up on the board. And I put my friends up there. I put a list of people that I should call quite often. Also, if you're a veteran, you put, put your appointments up there. You put all that stuff up there. I got like a, a red ant thing going here on my seat. I don't know if you can see them or not. Hopefully you could. But anyway, I got red ants all over my, my seat here. So I don't want to really sit on them. But anyway, the whiteboard has always been a part of my life here in the Philippines since I got here. It's always been there, always helped me, always helped remind me for things. Let me see if I can sit up here for a second and we can finish this talk. But for me, it's been key because the budget is such an important part of my life every day here that I, can, I know where all my money's going every day. I know where to put it every day. I know it reminds me to send money to my girlfriend at the beginning of the month and I check it off that it went to her so she has the budget money things like that and I'm not saying you're saying you're gonna run your budget like me some people won't some people don't believe in giving their girlfriend money they want to have full control of it well if you really trust your girl that's a good way to start is starting to let her take care of the budget see how she does with it most girls do pretty good with it some girls won't but if the girls really close with you and stuff you know let her do it I like having my girlfriend in charge. She goes food shopping. She goes, gets everything that needs to be done. She pays the water bills. She pays um, the electric bill. She pays the rent. She takes care of all that. I don't have to worry about it. It's out of my hands 100%. That's the best part about it. That's the part I love the most is having it out of my control and I can rest and relax. And I don't really rest and relax because I'm always answering the phone and stuff. But you guys get the gist of what I'm saying. It takes one more thing off my plate. And that's the thing I, that I love the most, is having one less thing on my plate. But anyway, for you guys, I put my, my healthy vet information up there. I put um, my medical appointments up there. I put things to remind me about prescriptions, if I need to get a prescription soon. Reminders. And then what I do is when I go out, I write that, what I need on there, on a piece of paper. And I just go out and get it, because it, it reminded me. Otherwise, I forget. You know, when you get out, you get, when you leave the house, you get busy. You're hot, you're miserable, usually you're not in air conditioning. It gets kind of, you have that misery index. You know what I mean? As soon as you walk out of the house, there's no more AC. Then what? Then you got to suffer. And you're thinking about the suffering, the sweating, and all that. That's the part that's the, the killer in the Philippines. But the whiteboard, we've always talked about that. Remember, remember in the beginning when I talked about using the whiteboard as a checkoff list for the SRRV, retirement visa, getting everything ready. That was a lifesaver to me because it wasn't just the stuff that 
that Mary Rose was telling me to get ready for the SRRV. It was also get, get, getting rid of my car, getting rid of all my extra clothes, getting rid of uh, furniture I didn't need anymore, getting rid of um, all, all types of things that I had. I, I had collections I had to get rid of and some of them I gave away. I had, you know, blankets, all types of stuff that I, I wanted to get rid of. I had furniture, all that stuff I had to get rid of. And I put it up on the whiteboard and as I went through, I checked it off, got, got rid of this, got rid of this. And when I finally, I remember towards like about two or three weeks before I left, almost everything was gone. And I was looking at my room and it was like empty. It was like, that's kind of a freeing feeling. And I've talked about this before. It makes you feel free from all the things that own you, that supposedly you own. Because those things own you to a certain point. Like you never realize how much a car owns you. Because guess what? You have to fix it. You have to keep it alive. That car needs gas. It needs oil. It needs to be fixed. You have to make car payments on it, insurance payments on it. That's the, that's the part. It's like having like a dog. You have to feed it every day, take care of it, love it. You know, and if you don't take care of it, the dog will die. Well, a car is kind of the same way. So you're kind of indebted to that car. You have to kind of pay all those bills. Otherwise, it just starts falling apart and gets sick. Well, that's the things you need to, need to get past when you get over to the Philippines. I mean, yeah, you can get a car over here. But over here, public transportation all the way, man. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, it's hot. You know, once in a while, I'll rent a car. Actually, more than once in a while. I just rent a car. I'll go up to Manila, take a day off, and enjoy the day. And I love it. I, I love going up to Manila and, or go down to Batangas, you know, enjoy the day down there or a weekend or a week or whatever. Just, just enjoy it and have that rental car. You know, I'll, I'll pay for a rental car with a driver and have the driver stay with us sometimes when we go some places. You know, because we, we rent like, um, sometimes we rent like a, a cabana style home on the beach and the guy will sleep out in like the kitchen section or in a tent or whatever and it doesn't bother me. You know, that's, that's the stuff that, that, that makes life fun. You know, not having to drive, enjoying the day. But remember guys, public transportation is not that bad over here. They have air-conditioned buses, okay? So the air-conditioned buses is, is like key over here too. For me, I use these air-conditioned buses quite a lot. If I go to Manila with my buddy, my girlfriend doesn't like them. She says they're too herky-jerky moving you back and forth and stuff like that. And she gets sick from, from actually having the AC on. I don't know why, because we have the AC on the house and she enjoys it at home. But for some reason, when it's in a vehicle, it's different. But anyway, that's what she says. But on the bus, when I'm on there, I'm okay because of the AC. I'll have it facing me. You know, you put the little vent up above you, facing on you, and you're good. You're good. You're good for that ride. But anyway, guys, I just want to throw all that out there. You know, remember, whiteboards all the way. That's what works. It'll help you all throughout your expat experience. You know, buy some extra dry erases. Buy some extra markers. Make sure they say dry erase on them or they're, they're no good for the board. They'll be permanent on there and you'll never get it off. Just remember that. That's very hard. Anyway, guys, it'll become a big help. And it's, it's great for putting notes down. And as you guys age, trust me, you'll forget. And some of you guys say, no, no, Steve, I'm smart, smarter now than I was when I was 16 years old. Well, the day will come when you're not. And we all forget. Anyway, guys, God bless. Take care. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog.